This is gonna be weirder than usual. Can't be helped. And we don't have to do any uh, volume adjustments this time. So here I am. Should be good. I know I shut you out sometimes. Mac, I'm I'll give you a quick synopsis after this cutscene's over. It's just that I get my hopes up. So many times it's led to nothing. It's a very nondescript building. Nothing. Pay attention to the exterior of the building. It's like we live in a room and there's a poster on the wall. We stare at it and we think that's the whole world. The room and the poster. The picture's something nice. A landscape, a famous person. Like in that movie. What is it called? The prison movie. Shawshank Redemption? The room's a cell and the picture, it's different. For each of us, it can be beautiful. Look at his lens. Or terrible. But we're all transfixed. But it's all a lie. Something to distract us from the truth. They're lying to us. We're lying to ourselves. The room's not the world. The world is much bigger and much stranger. There's a hole hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? So the uh, the poster thing kind of reminded me of Anyone Stranger here? Things a little bit. Or, you know, Silent Hill. A variety of different concepts that have taken on this, like, the familiar juxtaposed against the supernatural or unknowable kind of situation. Uh, I'm just going to do something real quick. Just gonna do that. So our character says uh, that you brought me here, and there's some question about what that means exactly at the beginning. You see that, like, kind of a crystalline looking thing happening every so often, that, like, effect. There it is. We're gonna find out later that that's called Polaris. And we don't know much about it at the point that I've gotten to in the game, but it is, uh... There's something about that that's pretty intriguing. Um, we're also gonna find out there's some other ties to this building that we have that aren't quite, uh, front... First and foremost. It is. It's a triple-A game <laughs> with a, a Nick twist to it, isn't it? Uh, very, very pretty game and very suspenseful and interesting. Um, so to give you just a very quick synopsis as I start off, uh, this is essentially a government-run sort of SCP foundation, just to give you some built-in foreknowledge. Um, it, I mean, it's not technically that, like, they're not calling it SCP or anything. I saw it a long time ago. And it's not that that's, it in my like, a shared universe or anything, uh, but that's kind of what the gist of it is there's like some extraterrestrial supernatural stuff going on that this is a fa uh, facility that studies that kind of stuff and contains that kind of stuff and we are the director the new director in fact of this building uh the reason that we're the new director we're going to find out in a second uh, but we have reasons for being the director beyond that we're just sent here to replace the old director. Um, the 
gist of the gameplay comes across sort of like a third person shooter resident evil 4 kind of uh running gunning kind of game it's not really a cover shooter there's not much cover although you can dock but you don't like grapple to the cover or anything like that texture please texture Um, there's also some interspersed FMV cutscenes in this, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so notice this is the janitor. He has his own portrait in this shifting, reconstructing building. That's not something you would expect. Um, our weapon will get different forms to it. It actually shifts and reconfigures the same way the building does. Uh, and we also get mods and personal mods, so there's actually some loot in this too, strangely enough. Uh, materials, these are for constructing different weapon schematics, and I have no clearance level at the moment. We're going to get that sorted out soon enough. Um, these are our text and voice logs. Um, just gives you some quick breakdowns and some backst backstory and, you know, lore. So it's just telling us that there's mold removal, janitorial costs, major costs, though, data initiative center, construction, staffing, surveillance. You know, not crazy stuff, but we got some redacteds in there, as you're going to run into. I'm going to try and be more thorough this time at reading all of the text, if that's cool with everybody. Um, because some of it actually goes, it goes and gives you some nice foreshadowing. So there's a little reminder here saying when you bring your items in, you can't have any of these very particular things. Recent incidents have necessitated an issued reminder on prohibited materials. Unauthorized weapons, pagers, laptops, smartwatches, smartphones, smart gaming devices, anything smart, number two pencils, any objects considered iconic representations of archetypal concepts, like rubber ducks. Yeah. So that's a very specific reference for a reason. Um, not only is a rubber duck one of the SCPs that people are aware of in their own universe, um, they actually have used that concept in this game, too. There, we actually will encounter a rubber duck, quote, SCP. And, and again, when I call them that, I'm, they're not in lore SCP, but they're a similar concept. Um, anyway, let's keep on. So we've got a meeting with the janitor coming up here. I wasn't able to interact with the duck, unfortunately, when I saw it before. So in the first playthrough, I kind of uh, spent a lot of time talking about the lighting technology and looking at all the little facets and corners of things. Federal Bureau of Control. Just know that I'm... All these years, I've been looking for them, and they were hiding... I'm very engrossed inside. in the lighting and the technology behind all this, and I find it fascinating uh, the lengths that they've gone through to make this rendering technology as accurate and detailed as possible. Stuff like... Look at these details, the... Uh, not that this is to do with the lighting, but uh, in lore stuff as well. All of the <laughs> varieties of snacks come in generic white bags. Oh, that's a tape recorder that I can't interact with. I wonder if I can come back here later. Oh yeah, the Dharma Initiative is totally a reference to, I think. Yeah, they've kind of rolled up all of those, like, x files -y stories into one lore, it seems. Um, again, we do have ray tracing on, so you're going to see some really cool lighting effects, the way that light scatters, bounces, refracts, diffuses, all of that good stuff um, is present and accounted for. And uh, I can do a quick breakdown later of what ray tracing is all about, if need be. Hello? There's a Finnish man singing. What's this all about? Excuse me. There you are. You are here. Best guy in the game. Janitor's assistant. You need to go to the interview. Go that way to the elevator. Thanks. Elevator that way. Got it. Very good. I'm Ahti. Janitor, by the way. You work for me. You can say I sent you. If they don't hire you, they'll... You are a helmet. 
What does that mean? There be work for the axe. Take them behind the sound that you hold. He sounds like enough night shift load <laughs> drops to know it makes us come off weird. It sounds like he was saying if they don't hire me, he'll take them out behind the shed and cut their heads off. <laughs> oh god damn it, basically. Cool. Southeastern, uh, Southeast Finland, Gandhi man, if you can translate for me, that would be amazing. That's him. Nope. As of this point, I was quite engrossed with him. He seems like a lovely dude, actually. Um, check out the swirlies on the floor. That's really what the swirlies look like. I love it. Oh, thanks, man. No pressure, of course. If you need to go to sleep, you need to go to sleep. There's our elevator. And this is just the way back down. All right. The cell and the poster. I was 11 years old the first time I saw behind the poster. They told me I imagined it. It's like Doctor Who. I've been trying to pull it down ever since. Amy Pond's cracking the wall in the Will you help? fish fingers. <laughs> God of water. Oh, I didn't know that. The visuals in this game are so good. The cinematography, the way everything's set up is just brilliant. Thinking about how much effects work went into all of these little scenes and how many of them there are. I mean, I know it's a big budget game, but goddamn, this is like still tons of work. There's no shortage of this stuff. Like, it is interspersed throughout the whole game. They do keep Could using that for a moment? heavy typography as you well. Know what's on my mind. My baby brother, Dylan. Seventeen years since the men of this bureau took him. So the director's office is straight ahead. Um, it's an interesting story considering I'm the director, but I'm going to meet the director. Hmm. Clearance level 01. Gonna have to find a key card for that. Uh-oh. Internal lockdown, in effect. Well, that's the first I've heard. Obviously, in a very serious government building like this, if there's an internal lockdown, in effect, there's no way I should be getting in. But then again, Ati seems to think it's important that I get in, so maybe there's a reason I can. I've gotten a couple more documents here. Let's have a quick look. Uh, approved technology reminder. Drafting any public-facing material while pending any notifications of death related to the Willow AWE. Uh, AWEs, I think that's what they call their version of SCPs in this. Please adhere to the following guidelines. Words or phrases to use. In service of his or her country, regret, proud, pride, will be remembered. Words or phrases to avoid. Alaska, scissors, blood, bleed, loss, apologies, sorry. Right. We actually learn more about this AWE uh, later on. That there were <laughs> uh, scissors that for some reason seemed to want to uh, suck people's blood out. They, they found... They were found to want to dig into people's skin and suck their blood out or something. Uh, we'll see more about that later. R4 reports. Uh, what was the relevant info here? Mandatory. Uh, it just sounds like bureaucracy. Interdepartmental claims. Yeah. Uh, policy, annual reviews. Nothing particularly that interesting there. Uh, <laughs> this is just a little funny one. Uh, redacted. A shark in his redacted, although secure redacted, permission to redacted, 
following basic protocol. Rea redacted shoot to kill. Redacted. Yeah. So there's some wacky junk going on here in the control facility. Oh, right. The sound happens right as I walk up. I actually Shit. might have talked over that and didn't realize Shit. that he shot himself Shit. right then. You want me to pick it up? The murder weapon? Really? So you can see Polaris happening. Something's outside. Oh, I was coming here a mistake. So check that out. There's like some kind of red psychedelic... I don't know what you call that. It's like just a particle effect, but... Gives you a real sense of tension. So there's a weird looking gun. Not really your typical revolver. It's got kind of a... Well, I, I look at it like magnetic. It looks like a bunch of magnetic chunks that are all stuffed together. It's cool looking. Note the time, 125. Probably not important. Ooh. Is he in... Yeah, I think he's inspecting some of that material we find in the, uh, uh, the astral plane. That marbly looking stuff. Alright, so let's take our gun. Yeah, happy to hear it, type fun. Now this is where I get super on board. The gun sword intentionally left blank. And there goes the poster. Objects of power can cause or be results of AWE's altered world events, intrusions upon the perceived reality. Now, the service weapon is, of course, a prime example of an OOP of Object of power powerful one ingrained in the bureau's dna a key component in our prime candidate program come out of that russian roulette a winner and you <laughs> you're it yeah that's actual fmv footage no the gun isn't actually oh, talking but place. it is vibrating where am i Oh, thanks for coming in, ins Elite Insanity. I'm sorry you're feeling that way. But yeah, happy to give you a distraction, because I kind of feel the same way quite a bit. So we found ourselves teleported to the astral plane. The bubblegum Polaroid. All or none of the above. So to give you a little context here, uh... This pyramid, as far as we can tell, seems to be where the board is housed. And the board meaning, like, the... The board of directors, like, the... The higher-ups of this company, quote-unquote. Uh, and the director, meaning the person who just shot themselves, and now me, the main character, uh, we are now tasked with being the person who has a direct line with the board. Let me know if you don't follow any of that, because it's really out there stuff, but it does get a little easier to follow later on as they start to introduce more. Um, they do actually delve into some of this stuff later on. So that's where I'm getting this info. I'm not just kind of, like, winging it. The same gun. So now I've actually made my bond with the gun, I suppose, now that I've picked it up in the astral plane. Okay. Now I have a gun. And it seemed to be implied that because the prior director shot himself, it fused him or an, an echo of him into it. So it almost seems like we're converging on shared knowledge because of the fact that I'm wielding this weapon. Also, if I get anything wrong here, uh, anyone else that knows this lore, feel free to correct me. I do want to actually follow it as close as possible. I find this very interesting.
But yeah, despite being uh, at times sort of lore heavy, the game is honestly uh, very uh, gameplay heavy as well. It's just, it's a shooter. We don't have a lot of uh, moves to start out, but the roster of available moves kind of ratchets up as we go along, of course. Right now, all we can do is melee and shoot. Uh, but we'll get upgrades to our gun. We'll get a dash ability that lets us air dash. Uh, we can throw things with telekinesis. And, and well, well, you'll see. So enemies drop health. That's what those little blue nuggets are. They also at times will drop mods, which let you augment your weapon and yourself. You, we wield the gun slash you. The board appoints you. Congratulations. Something's coming. This threat. An attack. Duty as director. Keep the bureau safe. Also, the service weapon is only available to the director. No one else can wield it but me. It's the dead man. Right after the pyramid spoke to me, and it was just noise, and I understood every word. And this gun's alive. You know what? I'm happy. Happy to be here. So the first time when I saw this, I didn't really follow why she would be happy. But it seems like she's sort of risen to the moment, considering that she came here under the pretenses of hopefully extricating her baby brother. Uh, that's part of her motivation. And I think she had a lot of apprehension about whether or not that would be a good idea. Uh, but maybe now that she's assumed this power... Well, maybe she's changing her mind all of a sudden. We'll see. <laughs> Check out that lighting. Isn't that amazing? There's no shortage of cool moments like that. It happens constantly. That was FMV, yeah. Thank you. I had to ask that as well. I couldn't tell. <laughs> right, so these are the hiss. And we're going to spend quite a while examining what exactly the hiss are. Uh, but the quick summary is that they they seem to be possessed humans. And you can see that sort of like a vapor seems to be released from them when they leave. Um, yeah, again, you'll see more about that in just a moment or two when we meet another character. It's weird, though, that the director doesn't have a clearance card. One would think that when we get the gun, we would also get a clearance card, right? What's up with these textures not loading in? And also, why do... Is that not me? Hmm. It's weird that that's happening, considering... I thought I had level of distance stuff up. Yeah, far object detail, high. Okay, I don't know. Oh, it is. The portraits change. Okay. Right, so the, the major feature of this building is that it reconfigures and changes all the time, so... The hot light. No, you... Yeah. Secure line of communication. Guide us. So kind of a unique thing about how the gunplay works in this is that you don't actually reload your weapon ever. Um, it just recharges. So you can see I have sort of an ammo bar underneath my reticle there, and then it just refills when you don't fire for a moment. Um, that was an undefined reading. 
one of the synthesis materials we'll use to build forms for the gun and stuff. Of course, I'm going to still hit R all the time because I'm trained to do that now. Uh, if you button mash in this and you try to shoot over and over again, the recoil will make you miss a lot, unless you're at very close range. Short bursts of two or three bullets at a time tend to work okay. But you don't want to go much harder than that. Um, and you might have noticed, of course, there was a big red block there a moment ago. It's very much like Devil May Cry. Um, there are these... Uh, barriers that the the hiss will set up. Environments are also quite destructible, which is a great thing. Um, classic remedy, of course. Shelters often contain these little green boxes, or uh, boxes with green lights on them, rather, which often have weapon mods in them. This time it had a material and a correspondence. Uh, Marshall AWE Investigations. Let's read. Hold me to task, by the way, if I decide to stop reading text again, because I want to actually do that this time. Uh, agenda items for next executive meeting. Rising costs of AWE response. Update on mold eradication efforts. So we have a, a re-mentioned uh, mold problem. Upcoming annual salary review. New supplier of coffee filters to be found and vetted. Uh, good old bureaucracy. And please come prepared. Thank you for your time. Okay. By the way, I was using my cursor that you can't see to highlight things. So I'm just going to quickly make that visible to you. So these are the guys that I was just fighting, the Hiss Corrupted Guards. Uh, the Bureau has many internal security personnel. The Hiss was quick to take advantage of this fact. His guards use the standard issue bullpup rifles they carried prior to corruption, uh, while the armored guards carry pump action shotguns. So there's two variations of these guys. Hey, Frozen Yak Man. Uh, they have no observed paranatural abilities, so they can't, like, telekinetically throw stuff at you or anything. They just kind of run around and shoot. With the exception that certain His guards are protected by a shielding of dense His resonance. So you'll see ones with, like, a mist around them, and those ones have, like, a bullet stopping fog. Uh, is the shielding a result of prolonged his corruption? Does the his mature in organic hosts over time? More data is needed. Did the his target individuals combat training? Does the his have that level of cognizance? Uh, does it utilize hosts for tasks they are best suited to? Combat trained hosts are reserved for combat? Makes sense. These are all questions for later, though it is obvious the corrupted individuals retain knowledge on use of their weapons. Refer to redacted for a full file report. Okay. And there's the service weapon. I actually didn't read this one last time. So, containment procedure. No unique procedures required. Okay, it's just fine to be out in the open. Um, and yeah, we will get description cards for all the enemies. Not just that one or anything. They're, although they're... They don't come at us super fast. There's like two forms we'll find in the first couple hours and then a few more after that. Uh, but it does seem that they keep showing up pretty regularly over time. Uh, the form is variable. When bound, the object allows para utilitarians to redacted. This object must be must only be found by individuals seeking the role of redacted, probably director, I would assume. Uh, this object will determine whether redacted. If rejected, the applicant is terminated. That's what they meant by Russian roulette. So if the object accepts you, you're good to go. You get to be the director. You get to wield the service uh, weapon, and you can also use the key functionality of it to get into certain areas of the building. Uh, but if you don't get accepted, then uh, I guess the board terminates you. <laughs> this process is dictated by the board, is probably what that says, though their criteria is unknown. The object was discovered inside the oldest house, that is this building, we call this the oldest house, um, in the room that is now used as the director's office. The popular hypothesis redacted many forms throughout history. Redacted. Mogilnir, Mogilnir, Excalibur, uh, Varanostra, all weapons that redacted of their wielders. 
If objects of power are the convergence of forces based on the collective subconscious, then this may be the original manifestation of that event. If this is the case, redacted. See Dr. Darling presentation 11.1 .1 for details. Okay. Mo Mo Emjolnir. Yeah. <laughs> Mjolnir. Objects of power can cause or be results of AWE's altered world events, intrusions upon the perceived reality. We'll see more about the hotline in the background in a moment. Cover their connection to the astral plane as well. Now, the service weapon is, of course, a prime example of an OOP, a very powerful one. Dude's got a cube. Ingrained in the Bureau's DNA, a key component in our prime candidate program. Come out of that Russian roulette a winner and you, <laughs> you're it. Lose and you're well. Thank you. They kind of gloss over that bit. <laughs> Federal Bureau of Control. Cube. Don't forget. <laughs> yeah, they have quite a few of those uh, little FMV cutscenes throughout. There's also a really creepy Finnish cartoon later. Um, yeah, so these you don't really need to know much about. They're just various uh, synthesis materials that we use for upgrading our weapon and things. Um, but the individual ones aren't particularly important. They're just, you know, they may as well be materials of, like, iron and, you know, copper or whatever. <laughs> 